deaerator has an important number of roles to fill in our boiler room. One of the obvious roles is to store and supply water to the boiler to keep the boiler full to make steam. But another important side of its function that's often overlooked is what it's doing for us on the water treatment side. The deaerator is designed to bring the water temperature up before we feed it to the boiler to prevent thermal shock, etc. cetera. Um, but it also drives oxygen out of the air, reducing our chemical treatment requirements and ensuring that we don't have oxygen pitting in the boiler. In order to accomplish that, we need to get the water to a certain temperature, and we do that on a deaerator by holding the pressure vessel at a certain pressure. So part of our daily checks on a deaerator is going to be the pressure on the deaerator and the temperature on the deaerator. The correct pressure and temperature on a deaerator in most industrial applications is going to be five to seven PSI of pressure and 225 to 227 degrees. If we've got that pressure and we've got that temperature, we're getting good deaeration. But sometimes we don't have that temperature and sometimes we don't get that pressure. So we're going to look at a few possible causes for that. The steam that we need in the deaerator to take that deaerator water temperature up to 225 comes from a pressure reducing valve. This valve maintains five to seven PSI on the DA to get that temperature. But if we've got a clogged strainer, uh, malfunction of the reducing valve, or if the reducing valve is just undersized, we're not gonna have sufficient steam to raise that temperature. And that will be evident because we'll have a low or intermittent pressure on the DA instead of a stable five to seven PSI, which is what we need. Heating the water effectively in a deaerator is not just as simple as putting steam pressure to the vessel. We've got to have a good mechanism for heat exchange. If I fill this DA with cold water and then apply steam, the temperature of the water is never going to come up. Uh, so in order to actually transfer heat to the water, we have to heat it as it enters the deaerator. In this case, we've got a spray type deaerator. So the water going into the DA is going through a conical spray mechanism to give the water surface area and that way it can absorb the BTUs of the steam and at the same time oxygen can be driven out of the water. If we've got a problem with that spray nozzle, if it's got a broken spring or it's worn, we're not going to get that good water distribution and we're not going to get good deaeration and good temperature in the DA. Other types of deaerators, like a tray type deaerator, may spray that water into trays through which the water trickles and gets heat exchange in that fashion. The last thing I'm going to mention is a deaerator vent. The vent often gets overlooked because, uh, frankly, we don't see it. Um, but the plume on the vent outside the building should be two to three foot. The purpose of the vent is to allow that air that we're driving out of the water to escape the vessel. If we close the vent on our deaerator, we're going to trap that air in the DA. The pressure reducing valve is not going to be able to tell that that is air pressure, not steam pressure, and we'll have a drop on our DA temperature. So if you've got the pressure on the DA, um, but you're not getting the temperature, sometimes giving the vent a turn or two open um, and monitoring it over the next couple of hours will tell you if you had an insufficient venting on the DA. So to ensure our DA operation is correct, we need to check our temperature, 225 to 227 degrees, and our pressure, 5 to 7 PSI, daily on the deaerator. If we don't have a way to check that, we need to install those sensors. If we don't have reliable pressure gauges, we need to replace them, because that's a critically important way to tell if it's working. Um, if your deaerator is not working well, you're going to use extra chemicals, you're going to have thermal shock on your boiler, and you're going to have oxygen pitting, and that's going to be expensive repairs. Well, I appreciate Jude hanging out with us. As always, he's always got great information. Now, Ware has got some exciting announcements coming up. We're just going to leave it at the WeRentBoilers.com that you can see that. 
but exciting additions to the rental fleet that is coming, and I will let you know soon. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you don't mind, maybe share a video or subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.